Are you a small business trying to figure out why your business needs a business plan? This video is for you. In today's episode of SME Roundtable, I'm excited to host Amechi Prince Chekube. He is an accountant and SME consultant. He's going to bring his wealth of experience to help you understand what a business plan is and why your business needs it. Without further ado, let's get started. But Prince Amechi is an accountant and an SME consultant who is passionate about youth development. So he's, he's running his businesses, his private businesses, but he has had to build capacity for SME consultancy. He is a speaker and a trainer. He's a business coach and a youth development strategist. He's also a CEO of you know, the companies that he runs and a certified management consultant. So um, operating predominantly in the East, um, particularly in Abba, where he took off from and reaches um, other locations. So over the years, um, Prince Amitri has helped businesses to develop um, the business plans and then access opportunities of growth like funding. And um, today we're happy to have you, sir. So you can talk to, you, to, to us about what a business plan is and why do businesses need a business plan and the things that they need to consider, you know, to, to get into a business plan. So let me get started this way. You have your business and you're running your businesses. So why do you yes. do what you're doing? Why do you bother about going to help startups? Why do you bother about helping other small businesses to get off the ground even when they are going to literally become competition to your businesses. Why do you do this? Okay, um, let me start this way. Uh, when I was in the university, uh, that's um, my second year to be specific. Um, a man came to teach us entrepreneurship development. Uh, he's by name Dr. Gregory Ibe. He's the owner of uh, Gregory University. Then he has not started that university. So he taught us entrepreneurship and that was, in fact, he was the one that planted the seed of entrepreneurship in me. He was the first man that mentioned business plan to my hearing as a document. And I got excited. I started searching about entrepreneurship. That was my first attempt to write a business plan when I applied for a job with a financial institution in Abuja. Um, I got uh, an invite for interview. After the interview, they sent me a text message. Oh, congratulations, you passed. Come, you can come on Monday for the documentation award. And I was, wow, so finally I've gotten a job. I went there the, the, on Monday. The, the lady told me, oh, sorry, we sent, this message was sent in error. I was, wow. are, you, are you okay? Said, yes. So I was transfixed. I couldn't move. I had to stand up and nod me, push me aside so I can attend to other people. So as I left the office, I started crying. I said, friends, this is the end of it. You must create solution. So that night, that was the night that gave birth to Mazdo Clean Services. Wow. I was in my room thinking that can't I solve problem? Can't there is, there, is there not something I can do? The following day, I started searching about um, a cleaning company in Abuja. I came across Techno Clean Services. Um, I took their number, called their manager. He invited me, we discussed, he trained me. Before you do it, I started my own business. And um, I started in Abuja, but to survive there was very difficult for me. I have to relocate down to the east. And before you know it, I started getting contracts. Like now I have six permanent workers working for me. Now, I started another business. <clears throat> the business failed. I started another business. The business failed. Uh, that is, um, after, then Mazo Clinic Services is already running and doing well. So, at the long run, I was like, what is, where am I missing it? I went to apply for a loan. I got the loan, used it for the business. The business still failed. 
Wow. Oh, when I, I started asking myself question, what is this? I started reading about entrepreneurship, started going for training, seminars, then I discovered my mistake. So it was this, this discovery that now created this passion that, see, business is not just what you think. Business is not just that thing you wrote down on paper. You might have passion, you might have idea, but see, coming out in the street to run a business is a different ball game. You, you actually need people to guide you. you just by the fact that you can read them from books, you can you know, study about it, but the real experience is something different. So that was what motivated me that, see, I've, I've failed several times. I've done businesses, I've lost money. And I said, no, with these experiences I've gathered, it could become uh, a solution to um, entrepreneurs that are coming up. That was what gave rise to Reindeath Consulting. I started Reindeath Consulting on WhatsApp group 2016. Wow. Um, I never knew that you can be paid consulting for people. I was just doing it, give, dishing out free advice, writing business plans for free until I got my first payment. Somebody just paid me 20,000 naira. He has, he has uh, gotten, he has um, paid for business plan from uh, different people and got the business plan. It was declined from the financial, by the financial institution. And he just stumbled on my group. He said, can you do this? I said, I wrote the business plan. The applied, it was approved. He said, send me your account number. I said, my account number, he paid me 20,000 naira. Uh, so people can actually pay for this. Wow. That was when I, wow. I started packaging it as a business and registered it. Now we have Rindet Consulting Limited as a company. So, so, so that, here's, that, here's a kid in, in the university who hears about business plan for the first time, is excited, goes out and begins to just run and yes. go all over the place about, and then he's failing like no man's business, but he never stops. That's the most interesting part for me. And today we have Rindet helping other businesses to avoid the mistakes you went through, right? Yes, exactly. Awesome. awesome. What is a business plan? So the SMEs that are watching this show, that are listening, that this is one question on their mind. Business plan. Let me not go into the uh, technical definition of a business plan. Um, let's just go with the layman term. A uh, business plan is simply a document, so to say, uh, that explains your business from the beginning till the end. It's a document that helps you plan, organize, and execute your business. Uh, it's a document that helps you think through your business. It helps you organize the step-by-step -step process through which you're going to start and run your business. So that's in summary, basically what a business plan is. It helps you think through, and you are thinking through, you are documenting those process down. Everything it takes for your business to start and run, you document it down. And that document becomes a business plan. Fantastic. So, so here you are, an SME, you have a business idea. You have this wonderful yeah. thing that you believe is going to change the world. And you're excited yeah. about taking it to the market. But it's still just in your head, right? Yes. You now need to put, remove that from your head and put it on paper. Is that what you're saying? Yes. And then put it, the step-by-step -step process to make yes. that idea of yours or that dream of yours a reality. Yes, to make right? it workable. Yes. Making it workable. Now, so it's yeah. interesting, where, when I engage SMEs about this and when we talk about this, and they find that once you begin the process of moving your ideas from the head into paper, you can begin to see a lot of transitions happening, even for you, right? Yes, because uh, when it's still in your head, you might think uh, this is the best, as in <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is a top notch. Let me give an instance. Somebody came to me for a business plan. Um, he told me that we need to sign a confidentiality agreement because this business uh, idea is 
um but it's, 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 it's one in the world. Things. I've heard that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> you you do I need to sign this so that I don't disclose this idea. Mm. So I just gave him, I said, okay, but look out, just go to this site and read up some few things. Come back, let's discuss. I gave him four different sites that are doing exactly that same thing that you want to do. Wow. So after after reading through, it was like wow. So that he has not even heard about it. I said, you've not done enough research. So uh, that an idea came to you means that it has uh, more than a thousand other people has gotten that same idea. You're just waiting for the first person to execute. Key, you know? very key. First person to execute. I want to take that home. First person yes. to execute. To execute. So you don't just think... Uh, uh, this this is my idea and this is the best. So when we started working on the idea, he found out that there's a lot that excites him. When I expose him to some realities, he found out that, ah, so this one is not even this one. I have to edit out a lot of things, add in new things. And in the process of coming up with that business, we found out we fine-tuned the idea to reflect the current reality. Oh my God. What is happening? Oh my God. So we can easily be deceived by the emotions of our excitement about our idea. It can be an illusion in our head. So why do we need a business plan? Let me let me just go to the next person. Why do we now need a business plan as a business? Okay. Why you need a business plan in the one of the reasons why you need a business plan is to be able to fine-tune your business idea. Be able to fine-tune them. Because the process of documenting, writing down this business idea will now expose you to a lot of things that you've not initially put into considerations. And um, it helps you, again, to think through the business, to think through the business. You think about um, the financial aspect of the business. You think about the marketing. You think about the recruitment. You think about the human resource. You think about um, your mission your vision, your goals. So the moment you find out that it, it, it streamlines your, your thought process, it streamlines this idea, gives it tangibility. So in the process of coming up with this business plan will help you um, think through the process of this business and exposes you to some risk elements that are involved in that business. Because there's sometimes, because of excitement, we don't consider the risk aspect of that business. And we don't even consider if at all this risk happens, what do I do? What will be my exit strategy? What will be my mitigating strategy? to stop? So business plan helps you to think through your business. And it provides you, a, secondly, it provides you a step-by-step -step process through which you can execute your business. And again, when you have it as a document, it serves as like a reminder to your goals your mission helps to keep you on track that this is what I want. So, so most of the times we can be easily be distracted. But if, if you don't have something that is guiding you, you can be easily be distracted. You find that you start chasing this, chasing that, going for unnecessary expansion. Yes, expansion, have, there's a time that you go for expansion that you find that expansion will kill your business. But you need to plan it out. So that business plan will help you follow the step-by-step -step process, your developmental timeline. These are the process. These are how I'm going to do it. These are how I'm going to build structures that will carry the growth of this business. Then another reason why we need a business plan is that it can help you get funding because um, most of these um, funding agencies, one of the basic requirements is your business plan. Your business plan. They want to see... Um, how uh, the, the reality of this idea. You want to see from the beginning to the end of this idea. And it's only a business plan that will provide them such information. So uh, why you need a business plan is for is that it can help you secure funding from financial institution, from investors, even partners that want to partner with you. You can, they, they, uh, they, they require a business plan. And again, it can help you to restructure your business. If you're planning to restructure your business, you need a business plan to, put, to, 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 to document the process that you're going to take. It's not just for startup, even for existing businesses, business that are already existing and you want to expand, you want to restructure, you need a business plan. It will help you 
plan the process of expansion, the process of growth, so that you don't get off the track. So these are some of the reasons why you need a business plan. It's interesting to me that, um, you know, in answering this question, you started off with a lot of reasons before you came to the reason for accessing finance. Yes. Because when we talk about business plan, majority of SMEs out there just think about a business plan as finance. an instrument for accessing finance. Now, yes. if I'm not going to go to an a financier, if I'm not going to go to the bank for a loan, if I'm not going to go to an angel investor, an equity investor, I don't need a business plan. Please, no, 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 no. what do you have to say about this? How do you correct this, this impression? Business plan is not just for funding. It helps you, the owner of the business. It helps give you clarity. It helps open your eyes to... What exactly am I even doing? Sometimes after coming up with a business plan, you find out that you might not even need the loan. You find out that there are other, other ways you can wow. develop this business, start this business without even accessing phone. I can remember there's one of these training I organized about um, the, the, it is all, the training is about uh, assessing phone for small scale businesses. Now, after the training, almost people that came, they came to assess phone, but after the training, like four or five persons, now I realize that actually I don't need the I don't need the loan that I can actually do this business expand this business without a loan. Do you I've, understand? I've, 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 had, I've had similar experiences in almost all the entrepreneurship classes that I hold. I'm having testimonials where people rise up at the end of the five days training or at the end of the training and say, "Look, having heard what I've heard now and having known what I know now." Honestly, I was coming here for the purpose of a loan, but because of what I now know, my business doesn't need a loan. I can just go and leverage what I have now and then yes. grow. Yes. It's so but initially, the thing is just for loan. Now, mm -hmm. having gone through every process of it, they discovered that, see, even from what I'm making from my business, I can plow it back. Mm -hmm. You know, that, 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 that there are processes that I can take to grow this business without giving that business a burden of loan. There are some businesses, there are some persons that don't have, that, that they've not developed the capacity to manage a loan. Yes, I, I always say these things in my training. Despite the fact you came to uh, take loan, but there are people that have not developed the financial discipline to manage a loan. What are the things you, you consider when putting together a business plan that are important for SMEs to consider when putting together a business plan to make it a valid document that can be widely accepted or okay. widely implementable? Okay. Um, the, there are a lot of things to put into consideration and what you put into consideration will determine to a greater extent the, the workability or bankability of your business plan. Uh, number one is... Um, you need to decide at what capacity am I starting, the, uh, starting this business or what level of expansion am I going into? Now, this level of expansion or capacity you're starting this business will give you a framework which you do every other thing. It's like a foundation. Some persons will come for business plan okay, I want to go into poultry business, okay? So how much are you looking for? They'll say any amount. Now, because they've not decided on the capacity they want to start with, they will say any amount. Now, how can you go with any amount? You can't go with any amount. Now, but have they been have decided, okay, I want to start with 300 beds or 1,000 beds? Now, you ask yourself, what does it take to rear 1,000 beds. Okay, I will need uh, a space. I will need a pen. I will need a generator. I will need the water. I will need this. I will need that. I will need this. Then you total this thing together. You now come up with a specific amount that this is the amount that I am going for. Now, because you're starting with this, another person might want to go with 2,000 capacity. Another person might want to go with 10,000 capacity. Now, their requirements and the content will not be the same. Absolutely. Because of the capacity. Yes, yeah, because of the capacity you are starting with. So you need to understand the capacity that I'm starting with. This will give you um, uh, an idea of the things you need in that business. Another thing to consider,
consider is um, your business environment. It will help you to tailor that b- a business plan because the, the way business is run uh, in, a di- in a one state might be different than the way the business is run in another, another state or even in the same state, but because of difference in location, the way the business is run here might be different the, Good business is running at different location. So you consider your location. You put it. You put it into. You factor those uh, things into. You put it into consideration. Like, okay, is this place? This place. These people. This environment. These people do not like to visit farms. They prefer you coming to their house. Mm-hmm. So you factor these things into place that. The, because of where I am, the peculiarity of where I am, this is how they behave. And because of their behavior, this is how I'm going to run this business to help you to develop a business model. Now, if you use a business model that works in Lagos and apply it in a, diff- a location in the village, it will not work because of the peculiarity of your customer. So you need to consider, put this into consideration. Then again, you need to consider what am I, what actually, why do I even need this business? What do I need this business plan for? What do I want to do with this business plan? Is it for my own consumption? Is it to plan my expansion? Is it to um, uh, raise funds for my business? Is it to go into partnership? What exactly do I need this thing for? Now, if it is for your own consumption, the style and methodology which you usually write that business plan, it will be different from, from when you are using that business plan to raise fund. Now, if you're using it to raise fund, there are a lot of areas you need to lay emphasis on. Now, again, you still need to consider who are the people that are going to submit this business plan to, if you want to use it to raise fund. If it's for government or NGOs, the content should be different as well to when you are giving it to financial institutions. That, that, that's, that's, and very, that's a very important point. Somebody came okay. to me to review his business plan that he was sending to Tony Alumilu Foundation. And so mm-hmm. the mistake he made was he took a business plan he had written for the Atmos loan, which was a government intervention loan, and then mm-hmm. tried to repackage it for Tony Alumilu Foundation. And I said, hey, this doesn't fly because yeah. Tony Alumilu Foundation is private sector. And this is government. The, the jazz I'm hearing here, the English you are speaking here, the narrative you are putting out here, doesn't appeal to the private sector. Yes, that's yes. a policy background. But I mean, no, who cares? So I mean, this is so key. Mm. So this is what they need to understand. That, um, if you're going for government and um, these NGOs, the 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 emphasis is on the sustainability of the business and. Um, job creation and solution. You know, what solution are you bringing? What problem are you solving? But when you- What's the social impact? It was the social impact, you know? But when you're going for um, financial institution investors, they, they, they're after uh, what is your revenue model? How are you going to make money from this business? Is this business sustainable? Is this something that can last? Is this something that can, that can can, that you can scale up? Is this something that uh, uh, after so and so year we'll be able to recoup our money? Who are the people managing this business? What are their capabilities? So when you understand their area of focus, you'll be able to lay more emphasis on those areas. For instance, if you write a perfect business plan for, a, for, for a government uh, funding, it's perfect, you're able to get it right, and you submit it to a funding institute, they will, they will disapprove it. And it's not because the business plan is not correct. It's because it did not meet their own requirements. So most of the time, when people come for business, I ask them, what are the requirements? They say, it's just a business. I say, no, you need to understand what these people are looking for. What are they looking for? You might give them what you have. Yes, it's okay, it's right, it's powerful, it's good, but it did not answer that question they are asking. So if you did not get it the way they want it, to them, you are wrong and you will not be selected. So these are very important key things to consider. And one of the things that I think cuts across the various, um, the various um, recipients or consumers of a business plan that you may have is risk. The risk the analysis, risk. whether you are submitting your business plan to, for funding with the private sector, government institution, or even for your personal consumption. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm just thinking in my mind, a risk, risk analysis plays a cross-cutting role to help you to be able to, one, appreciate the risk that is involved in running your business, 
and then the strategies of mitigating that risk in, in what you call the SWOT analysis. Talk to us about this. Okay. Um, the SWOT analysis is very, very important in every business. Just like you said, it cuts across whatever you're doing, whatever you're going to use that business plan for. It's very, very important. And uh, most of the time, it's because we do not um, envisage a particular risk. When it comes, find out that we'll be thrown off board. You don't know what to do. So risk analysis is very important. You consider um, what are the things that are capable of pushing me out of business that are likely to happen in this business or even in my location. If you're doing business in a crisis prone area, uh, you should be able to uh, talk about security. How secure is this business here? What if things come up and I couldn't, people couldn't come out to buy from me? So unlike somebody that is in a very peaceful environment, that shouldn't be uh, much of a consideration. So you find that you talk about those things that are able to push you out of business, which are threats. And um, when you are able to list them down, this is now when you now talk about what are contingencies, what are the mitigating factors that will be able to put in place to stop these things from happening. For instance, uh, there's something ha happening currently in Naba. Those that, uh, the, their place is called shopping center, shopping plaza or shopping center. Uh, government has been issuing them warning that they want to um, uh, rebuild the markets. They've gone for the first time, they refuse. Second time, they refuse. Third time, they refuse. Now, it's happened that the, the government have to forcefully push some of them out. They revolted and they now reached an agreement. But before they revolt, many people have lost a lot of things. So I was telling some, some people there that since government has been pushing for this, you should have considered this as a risk that one day something, government must do what they want to do. That you should have been started considering, okay, what if this thing happens? What will I fall back to? So these are some of the risks you should have put it, you have uh, 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 considered, not just relaxing that nothing will happen. So um, now you now match your strengths with the, the, the contingencies you are putting in place. Do I even have the strength? Do I even have what it takes to uh, mitigate against this risk? Do I have the strength? Do I have what it takes? If I don't have it, how do I get it? What are my strengths? What are the, the things that I have or are within my reach? Or what do I even need to do now? So when you put these things in place, you find out that it will help you when things come up. And when you're doing this, you are, you are equally analyzing your own strength, not just the strength of the business. You, as the owner of the business, you're equally analyzing your strength because the business does not run itself. You are the pilot of that business. Uh, so it, when, you, when you consider the strength of the business, the strength of the business could be the location or nearness to the factory or nearness to market. Now, you, who is piloting the business, what is your strength? Do you have what it takes to drive this business? If you don't have it, how do I get it? This is where now you now consider your weaknesses. Um, I don't have this. I don't have this. These are the things that will affect my business. These are the things that will affect my business. These are the things I need to do. Okay, my business is, my, my poultry farm is located in an interior village because of the advantage I have is that the land is free. I have the land, I don't need to buy land, but it's located in an interior village. People locating, coming there to buy egg is a problem because the road is not good. Now, road is now a weakness. Now, how do I solve this problem? Okay, I need to rent a shop closer to the town. Now, bring this egg to the town so that my, uh, my, uh, the consumers will not start coming to this interior village and experience the bobs of, of bad road. So, when, as you're able to realize that this is my weakness, and these are the measures I've taken to, uh, these are my strengths that will help me to tackle this weakness. So in summary, you look, uh, you consider your strengths, you consider your weakness, and you look for ways to um, tackle your weakness. Then you consider the threats that can push you out of business. Then you also put contingency plans in place. 
how do I even turn this threat to opportunity? Sometimes, most times, there are some op threats can be, um, you can turn some threats to an opportunity. That's important. That's very important. I heard, heard an interesting thing. I mean, uh, why I also think that a business plan is very important because in my conversation, with SMEs, one thing that keeps coming up is when you ask them the single question, who is your competition? And I'm oftentimes hearing them say, I don't have competition. I'm like, liar. <laughs> you have a competition. So a business plan helps you to be able to bring out, do a critical analysis and bring out your competition and in what areas and what sort of strength do they have against you or how you can navigate the market to get around those. So talk to us about competition. Okay. Um, I've had similar experiences when you ask for competition. Some, some will say, everybody is my competitor. Some will say, uh, I don't have a competitor. Uh, now, it's important you understand who you are competing with because Every business out there is striving to dip hand into a consumer's wallets and take that remaining money there. So everybody is competing for that Naira in your bank account. Now, but there are businesses that are directly competing with you. And um, your ability to understand what they do and how they do it their ability to satisfy their customer will give you an edge because what keeps customer coming is when they are satisfied. And if your competitors satisfy customers more than you, the tendency is that they, those customers will move over to them. So what you need to find out how well do I satisfy this customer in a way that they will be more comfortable coming to me than going to my competitors. But before you can do that, you must understand who your competitor is. You must, understand, you must know them. You must find them out. Because you can't make that analysis in a vacuum. You must, there must be something they are doing better. Or maybe you just come into the industry newly. There are people doing what you want to do. So they have customers. So what will make the customers to live where they people that have had track record, they've been dealing with for a long time to come to you, they're just starting. So you need to understand what are these people doing for them? Is there a way I can do it more better than them? Is there a way I can add more value to, to that? For instance, I always tell from people's complaint, um, let me use this particular example that happened. She, uh, the man always complained that he's into poetry, bro broiler to be precise. But when people buy from him, they will always, ah, you don't kill it. I want you to slaughter it and prepare it now. So the man keep complaining. Ah, uh -uh, what is this? Is he, must I be the one to kill it? Can't you do this one? They say, oh, no, we don't kill. We only sell. We don't kill. These other people. Or I can I refer you to somebody that kills, that will prepare for you. So you find out that if somebody is already doing that, I know that customers are complaining about this particular, it's not as if they are complaining, or maybe they, they, they need that service. service. They are begging, literally, can you do this for us? That's what you know, business is about. So I say, this is, 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 is an opportunity for you to expand your business. It's an opportunity. So now if somebody comes in and find out that, see, customers need this, and you are not providing it, and they start doing that, that is how they've taken your customers from you. Of course. So, yeah, so you need to understand what is, is it that these people are doing right and what is it that they are doing wrong. Now, you leverage on what they are doing right and take opportunity of those things that they are not doing right to do them right, include it in your own. Because you might just, most people just start doing business and do it the way everybody does. My, my man Kechi is selling pure water. Me too. Let me go and sell your water. And she's making money. Me too, let me go and sell pure water. So the normal just run, way. you just run off and go and start selling pure water. Hey, you're not going to survive. <laughs> Simple. L learning about the competition will help you to close the gaps that exist in their business models. And, and then give you leverage to just plan in the marketplace. Yes. 
I mean, it's a very interesting and exciting topic. Uh, we can talk about it all day, but, you know, we don't have all that time. All the time, yeah. Yeah, technicalities of developing a business plan. When you talk to people about business plans, small business owners about business plan, and they're excited. And then, I mean, all of a sudden, they want to now develop a business plan. I mean, like you are experiencing 200 levels. It's, it's not an easy thing, moving from hearing about business plan, going through a business plan training, and then moving into developing your business plan. What are those technicalities? And then how do small business owners deal with it? Business plan is not, is not like writing a school project uh, where everything will look good. Uh, the professor will give you uh, 70 or 100 mark. And at the end of the day, that thing cannot be implemented. Now, you talk about the, the, the real life um, uh, solution in that business. And sometimes when you, you're developing a business plan for them and you ask them, Okay, what are the idea like? Explain the idea, as in sell the idea to me. They'll tell you, are you not the professional? Just write a business plan on, on this thing for me. Let me just go. You know, yes, I do that. I can just develop a business, but I'll tell you that this is not your idea. This is my idea. You know, everything in this business plan is mine, it's not yours. It's the minimum consideration for someone who comes to you for a business plan is at least sit down and explain your business idea to the consultant. Yes. So I know, I know that, I know some people, for the small business person who is as excited as you were in 200 level, you heard about business plan and uh, they heard about business plan from this um, interview and they want to run to go and say, oh, wow, I didn't think a business plan is important for my business. Now I know. Um, and let me go and put one together for my business. Um, what, what are you telling them? You've written a business plan when you are able to put down your idea, put them together. You'll be able to write a business plan. A business plan mustn't be this um, technical 100 pages, 50 pages, uh, 30 pages. A business plan could be two pages, three pages, four pages, depending on the level you are starting with. What are the, the basic things they did in a business plan? Number one, just need to describe your business. Okay, these are how this business will be. This is the location of the business. This is the idea. These are my target market. These are the people that will patronize me. This is how I'm going. These are the products that I'm going to sell. These are, this is how I'm going to make money. This is how much I'm going to sell it. It's just basic things. This, describing this thing in a nutshell could just uh, get up to three, four, five pages. And you'll be able, somebody that sees it will be able, in a nutshell, be able to understand what you are saying. Then when you start growing, you start now developing more complex business plan, you know, more complex business plan. There are sites that you can read through, but what you read is what you read. You still need somebody to help you. That is where mentorship is very, very important. <laughs> it is very, very important that you do a little research. Now, if possible, get somebody to coach you and put you through. So that's you know, mentorship, which is very important. And I hear you very loud and clear because there was no mentor early on in your life. It took you six years. That is more than a degree and a master's degree put together to come yes. to where you are today. And one of the re reasons why you're doing what you're doing at Rindet is because you want to close that, that gap. You want to bridge yes. that gap and provide, be there for SMEs to guide them either by building their capacities or supporting them um, develop sound, bankable business plans. Now, how can people reach you in terms of getting to you for support um, at all levels? Okay. Um, I have a page. My contacts are there. Um, I have my personal page. I have my business page. But most of the times I use my personal page, Prince Amitri, on... on, on Facebook. I will have our website, rindetconsulting.com. All our contact details are there. You can log into uh, www.rindetconsulting.com. You will get to see everything we do. You get to see our uh, contact details and how to uh, reach us. And again, um, my page, you have my, my WhatsApp number is there. It's active 247. So, uh, so those, those links... 
the links to the contacts, the link to the platforms you just mentioned, we're going to drop them, you know, um, in the comment section of this this video. Um, if you're interested okay. in reaching out to Praise, um, I made it to help you guide you on how you can get your business plan developed uh, or to build capacity on your business plan. We will put um, this there for you to be able to, 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 to reach it up and get, uh, get to go. That has been a very exciting journey um, from our guest today. I met you, Prince Chekube, who has been able to do justice to guiding us on what a business plan is and why your business needs it. This is very, very important for, 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 for SMEs to have. Now you know that you need a business plan not only to seek funding, but then to also keep it as a document of personal reference, to always keep guiding yourself. I tell people this, the shortest distance from one airport to another is a straight line. But if the pilot gets airborne and he goes to sleep, hoping that the plane is going to take him to the next airport through the straight line that he has thought out, he will wake up finding himself in the opposite airport. The reason is there are, all kinds, there are all kinds of things that will hit you in the weather and take you in a different direction. So you need to continuously do cost correction. That's what a pilot does. A business plan is a sound document that helps you to continue to do cost correction. You have done research tremendously on business plans. What are the sources um, or reference points that you may want to also share with um, people who are interested in saying, okay, I've heard about business plan. I'm excited. Let me check out things. So to even get a broader understanding, a broader knowledge of you know, business planning and sort of things I need to, to get hold of to develop my business plan. What are the reference um, um, the sources that you may want to share with us in this. There are a lot of uh, sources, depending on your capacity. Um, when I started, I started with um, B Planned Home, the sites that they, they give out free business plan and they help you customize your business plan. They give you access to customize your business plan. And uh, this other guy um, is a Nigerian. He has a site. What was his name again? Uh, is it Dayo? His site helped me a lot when I was coming up. Uh, he tried as much as possible. Sometimes I buy business plan, already made business plan from him just to see how it is structured, just to get some little idea. I, I spent money. Some makes sense, some doesn't make sense. But at the end of the day, I was able to pick one or two things from there. And again, um, there are other uh, SME toolkits by, I think it's from EDC, Enterprise Development Center, SME toolkit. Their site talks about business, generally business plan, and some other uh, issues about business. Even my, uh, our site, Green Debt Consulting, you will still get um, handy information on how to come up with a business plan. We have our blog uh, part of it that we write about businesses and how to come up with a business plan. And we have already made business plan there and download it. And it's editable. Um, it will help you to understand the structure, the content, and what it's required in a business plan. You can just take up from there. So that's some of the, the sources you can get information about business plan. Thank you very much, Prince, for this wonderful um, time you have spent with us here, giving us, exploding our minds completely about what business plans are and how small businesses can. Now, if you're listening and you're watching um, this program and you're excited about what you've heard, please hit the comment bar, uh, 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 section, hit the comment section, and tell us how you feel about this and what your experiences with business plans are and the sort of help that you may need, you know, constructing a business plan to move your, 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 your business forward. The SME Roundtable, like you know, exists to continue to provide opportunities of growth for SMEs to help you be able to fulfill the potential that you have to bring quality products to the marketplace and to become profitably sustainable. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of SME Roundtable. And I hope to see you the next video.